Alrighty, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Hope that you are still having a good Friday after bell work. So now uh, we are going to talk about your assignment for today. So like I said, I understand that introductions are probably the hardest part of writing. So I want to help you get to the point where you are comfortable writing them. And that means I've got to make you practice, 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 and like really outline what a good introduction looks like, what the different parts are, how it works. So I'm going to have you guys go through a PowerPoint. So it says, watch the video. It's this video and complete the introduction PowerPoint. The, the PowerPoint collects your responses so make sure you complete it. It'll probably be the second or third grade for this week. So please, please, please do it. Um, it does collect your responses um, and then click on almost anything that is underlined. It's a video. I've got a whole bunch of links throughout here and it also gives you a code. So you're going to click on the link and you're going to copy the code. And that link is going to bring you to this website and you're going to paste the code right in there and then hit enter. Um, so you can tell me how you're feeling today. It's Friday and you're almost done with this week. So I'm feeling pretty great. Um, so, oh, sorry. I went through this just to make sure it worked. Ooh, oh, no, bad. Do, 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 do. So here we go, essay introduction part one. So yeah, okay. What is an introduction? So an introduction introduces the reader to the topic of your essay. It's almost like a summary of what your essay will be about. Um, so if you're gonna give them a summary, like why is it important? So it gives your reader an idea of if your essay will be good or bad or if they even wanna read it. If your introduction is bad, they probably don't wanna read your essay. So an introduction is your first impression on a reader. It orients a reader with your writing and your topic. An introduction gives your reader basic background information so they can make connections and understand, and it gives their, them an outline of what you're gonna talk about so they know what to expect. Um, so again, think of your introduction as like a summary or like a roadmap for what is going to happen. Um, all right, here we go. No videos on this slide. Basically, it is really important that your introduction is good. That's what it boils down to. Super important. Um, so you're going to be building an introduction step by step, one by one. So the beginning is the hardest, but you're not going to start with a rhetorical question. No, I promise I have not wondered about the Boston Navy Yard. I'm a teacher. I teach English. I don't care about the Boston Navy Yard. No, I have not been murdered. Um, basically, a rhetorical question tells your teacher that you don't know how to start your introduction. And that means the essay is going to be bad. Teacher might also assume that you are asking the question because you don't know. And again, that tells your teacher that your essay will make him or her, her cry. Um, don't make me cry. So start with a sentence. Giving a statement shows that you are confident about the information you are going to tell your teacher or the reader. It makes you sound smart, too. So what kind of sentence should you start with? And that is a simple answer. A topic sentence. Which one sounds smarter and more informed? So A, dogs are great pets. B, dogs, once ferocious hunters, now make loving pets in many homes across the world. C, dogs, relatives of the wolf, are cool now. Or D, dogs make good pets sometimes? So... Um, you are going to choose, I'm going to say, ooh, probably B. B is probably a pretty good one. Um, it lets us know they're going to be talking about dogs. They're going to be talking about their kind of ancestry, how they were once ferocious hunters, and then now how they are pets. So here we go. We chose B, and B was the correct answer. So now we're going to go to this. What do you think the person that wrote this topic sentence will talk about? Ooh, we just talked about this. So they're going to talk about probably dogs. Um, a, uh, the ancestry of, can't spell guys. There we go. Of dogs. Um, and the modern dog. There you go. Dogs, the ancestry of dogs, and the modern dogs. So, dogs in general, but what they used to be like and how they are now loving pets. 
that's what this that sounds like a good essay right um just saying dogs are cool so what what are you going to tell me about you have to be a little bit specific in your topic sentence you're not super specific you're not telling me exactly what but you're telling me what your topic is that's what a topic sentence is um so then i've got these types of topic sentences so you've got a preview points the next detail so tortoises move very slow and steady so you know that the next paragraph they're going to talk about being slow and steady or that's what their topic is um shocker a surprising fact can you believe that tortoises can weigh up to 600 pounds descriptive painting a picture paddle like front legs help the sea turtle be a good swimmer personal making a personal connection releasing a baby sea turtle into the ocean was a special event so if we were going to try to make this about dogs you could say something like my dog who is a scaredy cat could have been a ferocious hunting companion in ancient times so you're tying your modern dog into your like the ancestry of dogs so that lets us know what you're going to talk about um, while making a personal connection you've got some more general topic sentence so names the main idea democracy is thriving at hillsborough high cluing topic sentence names the main idea and it gives a clue about details without naming them there are three ways democracy is thriving at Hillsborough High School. And then a specific topic sentence that names the main idea and specifically names which details will be covered in the paragraph. That's kind of like the topic sentence that we chose that, that B answer. So democracy is thriving at Hillsborough High and the student government, faculty unions, and the parent teacher associations. So then we go to part two. So part one is our topic sentence. Part two is gonna be our tab. So what is a tab? T stands for title of the text. It is important that your reader knows where you got your information from. For example, if your reader thinks your evidence doesn't make sense or isn't correct, they may want to check the text you used. Um, so what example would be a good way to introduce your text? A. My text is Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare and it is a play that you can watch. B. The really interesting story I read was Romeo and Juliet. C. My evidence will come from a book called Romeo and Juliet. D. Romeo and Juliet is a famous play by William Shakespeare that many ninth graders are forced to read. So, when you are writing a formal essay, you should never use my or I, which means the only possible correct answer is D. Romeo and Juliet is a famous play by William Shakespeare that many ninth graders are forced to read. Which means D was the correct answer. All right, so then we've got A. A stands for author's full name. It is important, just like the title, that your audience knows the author's full name. This is many things like, makes your essay sound credible. It's pretty important that I believe you. Let your reader know where your evidence comes from. Will allow your reader to do more research on their own about the topic or author. Um, so which of these is not a way to introduce the author of your text? So here we go. A, the author of the famous play Romeo and Juliet is William Shakespeare. Seems pretty standard, a little short, but okay. B, William Shakespeare wrote plays that I think are really tragic, like Romeo and Juliet. Mm, it's got I in it, so that might be our answer. Let me look at C. William Shakespeare, the author of tragedies and comedies alike, is also the one who wrote the play Romeo and Juliet. Mm, tells us he's the author of tragedies and comedies. And he wrote the play Romeo and Juliet. And then we've got D. William Shakespeare, called the bard because of his famous sonnets and plays, wrote the play Romeo and Juliet. So we've got a little bit of repetition of play, which makes it a little wordy, but not a bad way. So the only one that really seems wrong is the one that uses I. So that's going to be B. Let's see if that is correct. And it is. B was the correct answer. So remember, we've got title of the text. We've got the author's full name. Now we've got B for our tab. B is for background information. This is probably the most important part of tab. This is probably the most important part of your introduction. So it should be given, besides your thesis, uh, it should be given in two or more sentences, two or more background information sentences. So background information tells the reader important things they need to know in order to understand the points you will make. 
It should also be information that is important to understanding the topic in general. It basically provides the ground you're going to build your house, your essay on. If you were writing an essay about who is to blame for Romeo and Juliet's death, what background information would you include? Choose two. So, A, Romeo and Juliet, a play by William Shakespeare, centers around two lovers that ultimately end up dying because of their family's feud. Does that give us who the main characters are? Does it give us why they end up dying? Hmm. That seems pretty good. We've got B, the tragic events that cause the untimely deaths of the main characters are set into motion because of the actions of two minor characters, Friar and Lawrence and the nurse. Ooh, that seems pretty good. That tells us exactly who could be to blame for Romeo and Juliet's death. So B is probably a good one too. C, Romeo and Juliet, a tragedy by William Shakespeare, starts off with a love story between the two main characters, Romeo and Juliet. That's good, but does that give us any background information on who could be to blame for their deaths? No. And if we're focused on background information, probably not a good answer. D, William, Shakes William Shakespeare's play, Romeo and Juliet, is about Romeo and Juliet who die. Does that give us any background information on who's to blame or who could be at fault? No. So our two best answers were definitely A and B. So let's see. Oh, it's supposed to be A and B were the correct answer. I'll fix that for us before you actually like do this. But good job, guys. All right. Um, here we go. Background information continued. So a checklist for background information. Does this help the reader understand my topic, the points I will make about my topic? If it does, that's good background information. Two, is it important? If it does, or if it is, that's good background information. Does it add information? If it does, good background information. Um, three, uh, four, does it need lengthy explanation? If it does, so if it's something that you have to explain in like 10 sentences, it should go in the body paragraph, not the introduction. Is it information from someone else? So are you, is it a quote? Is it going to be cited? Uh, basically, if it is, if it needs to be quoted or cited, um, it should go in the body paragraph, not in the introduction. You never use a quote in the introduction. Never, ever. So I am writing about teenagers not being able to make logical decisions yet because their brains aren't developed. What should my background information include? So we're just choosing one with this option. A. The author of Teenage Brain suggests that female brains don't develop until the age of 24. Hmm. Talks about teenage brains, but, ooh, it's information from someone else. The author of this states. So, probably not something we should include because it's information from someone else. B. Teenage brains make dumb decisions sometimes. Does that information, does that add anything? Not really. I think almost anyone would agree that teenagers can make bad decisions. Um, I was a teenager once. I made bad decisions. All right. And we've got C. Romeo and Juliet are famous examples of how the teenage brain struggles to make logical decisions when faced with challenges. Ooh, that tells us about teenage brains struggling with logical decisions, but when it's faced with challenges and tells us that Romeo and Juliet are going to be examples that adds information it tells us the points they're going to make about the topic. It seems kind of important. Um, doesn't need a lengthy explanation. And it's not information from someone else. So C seems pretty good. Let's look at D, though. The average brain makes 20,000 decisions every second. So that is a fact, if it is one. Um, that would need it to be cited, which means that it can't go in the introduction has to go in the body paragraph. So I'm going to go with C. I think C is our best answer. And it was the correct answer. All right. So we're almost done with our introduction. We've got our topic sentence, which introduces that topic. We've got our tab. So sentence with the title of the text, the author's full name, and two sentences of background information. Then we go to part three, which is the very last sentence in our introduction. It's our thesis statement. So our thesis statement is probably the trickiest part of writing your entire introduction because a really good thesis statement is hard to write. There are a whole bunch of tips and tricks for how to write them, though. 
So there's video one is probably the one I would suggest the most, but they also have a thesis statement in three steps and then a ninja explanation of a thesis statement. So you can choose one or two or watch all three, but all three of these will help you write a thesis statement. They all give like the same kind of general directions slightly differently. They'll all help you though. So just to give you an example, you'll click on the link and you'll watch the video. Put great writing to work with Grammarly, your personal writing assistant. Hello, my name is Ariel and welcome to How to Write an Essay. Today I'm talking all about thesis statements and you might think that's impossible to make an entire video about thesis statements, but I have so much to say. Okay, so there you go. I'm just giving you an idea of what the uh, video will be like. Um, here we go. Wait, this sounds kind of like a topic sentence, but it's not. So then there's another <laughs> video. We speak student! So this is going to tell you the difference between a thesis sentence and a topic sentence. Please, please, please watch it because it is different. All right, then we've got to decide if this is a good or bad thesis. So the tragic deaths of Romeo and Juliet could be blamed on the actions of adults surrounding the main characters. But fate was the ultimate cause of Romeo and Juliet's downfall. Does this seem good or bad? So, is it arguable? Yes. Uh, does it tell us exactly what they're going to talk about? The actions of the adult surrounding the main character, but fate being the end time ultimate cause? So, I would say yes. This is a good thesis statement, and yes, this is a good. It's clear. It's arguable. We know what they're going to talk about, and it, we talk about the actions of the adults, and fate being the cause. So decide if this is a good or bad thesis. In the tragedy Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare, the two main characters die. Is that arguable? Um, no, they do die. Everyone knows they die. Um, does it tell us exactly what they're going to talk about? No. Maybe the two main characters death, but no, I don't know. That's not very specific. It's very vague. So I'm going to say this is probably a bad thesis statement. No, this is not a good thesis statement. It's not arguable. Everybody knows that Romeo and Juliet die at the end. So then, last one, we've got to decide if this is a good or bad thesis statement. Although many characters in the plays, although many characters in plays have hor died horrible deaths, Romeo and Juliet's deaths are among the most tragic. Okay, that's arguable. But what other characters are we going to be talking about? And that's also kind of opinion. So, like, it's good, but it's not, it's too vague, guys. We don't know what other characters are going to be talking about. If they had said, although many characters in Shakespeare's plays have died horrible deaths, then we know what characters they're going to talk about. But because it just says many characters, we don't know. So I'm going to say this is probably a bad one. Let's see. No, this is not a good thesis statement. It's arguable, but not specific enough. All right, so a good way to think of an introduction is an upside down triangle. You start with broad information from your topic sentence. So this beginning will be the topic sentence. You make it more specific with your tab. So your title, author, two sentences of background information. And then you get super specific with your thesis. You tell me exactly what you're going to be talking about in the order you will talk about it in. So an introduction do checklist. Start with a sentence that introduces the topic. Tells you the title of the text, tell you the author's first name, gives background information that is both helpful and important. Ends with one sentence that tells your reader exactly what point you will make in the order you will make them in, and is at least four sentences. Ooh, here's another video, guys. You are packed with videos today. So this is what not to do in an introduction. And that is the end of this PowerPoint. I hope that this helps you be a little bit more confident because more than likely on Monday, we're going to be doing a little bit of writing. So get prepared. Um, and I hope you have a good Friday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I can't wait to be back in the classroom and see you guys. Bye.